Hello, it's so nice to see so many people here. It shows that this is interesting for many, many, many people. So on behalf of the Rafto Foundation, the International Federation for Human Rights, and the Nobel Peace Center, I wish you a heartly welcome to the seminar, Speak Only When Spoken To. It's an honor and a great pleasure for us here at the Nobel Peace Center to facilitate this seminar with three remarkable women we admire and respect so deeply. Shirin Ebadi from Iran, Sohair Bilhassan from Tunisia, and Malahat Nasibova from Azerbaijan. Moderated by Lala Bukhari. Shirin Ebadi received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2003 for her, I quote, efforts for democracy and human rights, especially the rights of women and children in Iran and the Muslim world in general. In the spirit of her and the other Peace Prize laureates, the Nobel Peace Center has quite often focused on the conditions for women in terms of human rights. So last year we produced and hosted the exhibition Veiled Rebellion in this room, focusing on women of Afghanistan. And we also produced and showed the exhibition She Rose, about the three women who received the Peace Prize in 2011, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Leima Bowie, and Tavakul Karman. And these three, by the way, upped the number of female Peace Prize laureates from an embarrassing 12 to a slightly more acceptable 15. This year, we are celebrating the 100 years anniversary for Norwegian women's right to vote. And we also celebrate the brave women who paved the way. They worked hard, they didn't give in, and they won. So let their work and their victory be an inspiration for us to go on. There is still some work to be done. But let's face it, to fight for human rights and women rights, women's rights especially is not controversial in Norway. It's not dangerous. We have the fundamental rights for women in this country. When you, Shirin Ebadi, Suhair Hassan, and Malahat Nasibova do the same in and outside your countries, it takes incredible courage, strong determination, and admirable endurance. Some of us have had the pleasure to be together with you for two days. It has been extremely inspiring. It's been challenging and also exhausting to talk about what you can do and what we can do to help women in Muslim societies raise their voices and fight for equality, for democracy, and for human rights. Uyghur leader Rabbi Kader has also been together with us. She is now on her way back to Washington, D.C. to receive the International Religious Freedom Award tomorrow. These four women have received many prizes for their work, and now they are gathered for common efforts. So I'm sure that we will have two very interesting hours ahead of us. I would like to thank the Rafto Foundation and the International Federation for Human Rights for the fruitful and important cooperation around both this seminar and the workshops we've had so far and will continue tomorrow. So now it's a pleasure for me of leaving the floor to the Executive Director of the Rafto Foundation, Teresa Jepsen. Thank you so much, Bente. Thanks to the Nobel Peace Center and the International Federation for Human Rights for organizing this together with the Rafter Foundation. So we all thank each other. This is a joint venture. The Rafter Foundation has among its laureates five women from Muslim countries. Very different, they come from very different cultures and countries, but also with very different political challenges. But being women in Muslim societies, they have a lot in common. And in 2011, 
three of them met in Bergen, three Rothschild laureates, one Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and Sohair Belhassen from Tunisia, who's not a Rafter laureate, but who has won several international prizes. They talked, they had informal discussions late in the evening and decided that it's time to join forces in the fight for women's rights within Muslim societies. Rabi Kadeh is not here. Benta said why. I would like to quote her so that you also feel that her strength is present in the room. Although we have a great deal of work ahead of us, it's reassuring to know that there are so many of us who are ready to bring change to our, society, to our communities. Throughout history, women have been inspirational leaders and wise counselors in challenging times. The foundation for change in the lives of women is respect for their fundamental human rights, especially in the Muslim world. Human rights standards for women do not vary across cultures, but are universal and are a cornerstone of solidarity between us all. The Arab Spring of 2011 was an encouraging step in the emancipation of women across the Middle East. The promotion of human rights and democracy in the Muslim world not only illustrated to world, uh, that Muslim yearn for peaceful change, but also that Islam and women's rights are incompatible, are not incompatible. Now you will remember that. <laughs> we are, have uh, been very lucky to uh, also cooperate with Lala Bukhari. She will be this evening's moderator. She is a researcher and writer on terrorism and political violence. She has previous, previously worked for the Norwegian Institute for Foreign Affairs, the Norwegian Defense Research Establishment, the UN, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Please welcome Laila Bukhari. Thank you. Good uh, evening to all of you and uh, welcome. Um, amazing to see so many people here gathered in this room and uh, it's even been streamed uh, across the organizers' websites. So that's quite a few people we have gathered here to talk about some very important issues. I hope we can leave this room being inspired, being uh, provoked and maybe even a bit more knowledgeable about each other's situation. As has been said, Norway is in this year, 2013, celebrating that it is 100 years since we, the women of Norway, got the right to vote. We know that the fight for women's rights and equality is different. It's uh, in different fields did not end with that. It was a milestone, an important milestone. And this year in 2013, as was said, we will be cherishing and celebrating all the women who contributed to this. It's also a reminder, I think, this year that the situation is different in all our countries when it comes to human rights and women's rights, or women's rights and human rights. It's not to be taken for granted, and many of us feel that every day. The situation varies among all our different countries, it's a continuous struggle and a continuous fight for some. And for some, some very brave, it's a matter of life and death. I hope that this evening can be a, a meeting of inspiring stories, of provocative stories. And I know there's some very brave women and men in this room. We'll be meeting some of the brave women and I hope we'll have questions from both brave women and men afterwards in the Q&A. These women, three women, plus Rabia Kadir, who uh, unfortunately could not be here with us this evening, but she's been very present the last two days. Um, they have all come to Oslo, maybe to join forces, maybe to continue 
together. All in all, they came to share their experiences with all of us. First and foremost, to join forces and to learn from each other, maybe. The question is whether you do this as a network or whether we continuously do this in our own daily life. I, am, I for one, look forward to hearing what's been happening over the last two years. And I think your being here is a sign that you're also interested in learning. Before I invite the speakers to come to, stage, uh, uh, to the stage and say some of their uh, words, first and foremost, um, I'll say that we know that this is being streamed by all the three organizers' websites, on all their websites. So everyone who is speaking, who takes the word, we ask them to be clear in their questioning and their answers. Also, um, there will be translators. So I beg you for your patience as well, that sometimes it might seem a little bit tedious. We know it does sometimes with translation. Finally, in the world we live in, many of us will be twittering. And there is a chance to actually twitter in your questions as well. Maybe not the people here, sitting here, hopefully, uh, but people outside. And you can twitter your questions to me and to the organizers um, with the hashtag speak up. Speak up in one word. Okay, let's get the show started. We'll do this by now introducing one woman, one by one, and I've asked them to speak for seven to eight minutes with their translators or by their side on the present situation and some of the challenges, how they see it when it comes to human rights and women's rights in their countries. Shirin Ebadi will be the first one out, followed by my Lahat Nasibova, and then finally by Suhair Belhassan. We'll then open up for a conversation among ourselves, and then finally a Q&A at the end. Shirin Ebadi has been to Norway many times, and we always, it's always a pleasure and an honor to have her in our country. Shirin Ebadi, as we know, is an Iranian lawyer a human rights activist, a founder of Children's Rights Support Association in Iran. She is vocal and she is present in everything she does. She was the first female judge in Iran, but was forced to resign after the revolution in 1979. But it didn't silence her in any way. In 2001, we know, she was awarded the Rafto Prize, followed by the Nobel Peace Prize in 2003. She has lived outside of Iran since 2009. Now I look forward to hearing Shirin Ebadi, your words on the situation as you see it. Thank you. سلام می کنم و از بخیر میگم به خانم ها و آقایان هزار گرامی متشکرم از پیس سنتر و بنیاد رفتو که این جلسه رو ترتیب دادند. Um, good evening and greetings to all of you ladies and gentlemen, all the friends present here. I'm very grateful to the Rafto Foundation and to the Peace Center for organizing this event and allowing me to be here at your presence. Um, در فرصت بسیار کوتاهی که هست من میخوام یک شمای کلی از وضعیت امروز حقوق بشر در ایران براتون بگم. In this very short period of time that I have, uh, I have here with all of you, I would like to share with you very briefly the situation of human rights in my country. متاسفانه وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران روز به روز بدتر میشه و حکومت خشنتر. Unfortunately, the human rights situation in the country is going day by day from bad to worse, and uh, the government is not doing much. Uh, 
حدود 60 درصد از سال قبل بیشتر بود و ما دومین کشور از جهت تعداد اعدام در جهان هستیم. In the year 2012 Iran had the greatest number of executions. We had 60% more executions in 2012 than the year before. زندانیان سیاسی ما در یک شرایط بسیار بدی به سر میبرند. Our political prisoners are under severe and terrible situation in our prisons. هفته گذشته دو زن که به خاطر اینکه بهایی بودند محکوم شده بودند به زندان اینها بچه های شیرکار داشتند که با بچه هاشون رو مجبور شدن ببرن زندان برای اینکه بعد از شیر مادر تغذیه میکردن In the past days we hear about uh, we hear the news about two Iranian women who are imprisoned uh, in jail right now because they are Baha'is. They were obliged to take their breastfeeding babies with them in prison uh, because their babies needed to be breastfed and they were obliged to take them with them. شرایط زندان انقدر بد بود و به خاطر اینکه هوای آزاد نبود و وسایل گرم کننده نبود زندان ها سرد بودن هر دو تا بچه به شدت بیمار میشن و تقریبا در حالتی که مشرف به موت بودن اینا رو میبرن به بیمارستان and because the conditions in the prisons are terrible they were not allowed to leave and get fresh air also the weather is very cold and there is no uh, warming um, um, go, there is no, nothing to help to warm up the, the space both babies were uh, were ill and they became so ill that they were on the verge of death and finally they were hospitalized برای درمان زندان سیاسی واسه حتما اجازه مخصوص از دادستان صادر بشه که معمولا اجازه نمیدن. We have many political prisoners who are severely ill and they are not able to be treated at all. They need to get a permission, a special uh, permission from the government authorities in order to go to the hospital and be treated. در چهار سال گذشته بیش از پنجاه وکیل دادگستری به خاطر اینکه از متهمان سیاسی و عقیدتی در ایران دفاع کردن خودشون تحت تعقیب کیفری قرار گرفتن و الان تعدادشون در زندان که یکی از اونها به نام خانم نسرین ستوده امسال برنده جایزه ساخاروف هم شد. In the past four years, we've had more than 50 lawyers in Iran who were imprisoned and under severe pressure from the government authorities and their crime was to accept cases of political and uh, conscious prisoners who were asked them who asked them to take to take on the position of defending them many of these uh, lawyers are under they are imprisoned right now and one of them i would like to mention to you Nasrin Sotude who is right now in the prison in Iran and she is the winner of the year 2012 Sakharov prize علاوه بر خشونت های حکومتی فقر هم در ایران که روز به روز شدیدتر میشه باعث ایجاد نارضایتی مردمه. Apart from this government violence that uh, the, the whole country is suffering from, the situation, the financial situation is terrible in the country and people are becoming more and more poor. Um, علت فقر مردم تحریم اقتصادی است اما مهمتر از تحریم اقتصادی فساد اداری که در ایران هست و اینکه تعدادی از حکومت مردان از این تحریم ها چگونه برای پولدار شدن خودشون استفاده می کنند و رانت های خاص خودشون به وجود آوردن. Part of this poverty is caused by the sanction, the financial or economical sanction which is uh, suffering from the whole country. But another important part has to do with the administrative corruption of the government leaders in the country and how a group of our politicians are making adv taking advantage of the situation and they are getting more and more riches rich on the expense of the general population. من 
وضعیت حقوق زن در ایران روز به روز بدتر میشه. The situation of women and their rights are worse and worse every day. اخیراً دولت لایحه‌ای در مورد گذرنامه به مجلس داده که در کمیسیون تخصصی هم قبول شده و قراره که به زودی به صحن علنی بیاد و رأی‌گیری بشه. There is a law that has been accepted or approved by a special committee that was appointed by the parliament of the country and it is now under study by the parliament of Iran in uh, it is related to women's right to get a passport dar in layahe ke dawlat neveshte va komisyon majlis ham qabulish karde qeyd shode ke agar har kas bekhahad har zani ke bekhahad az iran kharij beshavad تا سن چهل سالگی بایستی از پدرش اجازه بگیره و اگر پدر نباشه بعد بره دادگاه اجازه بگیره and so this law that uh, that was um, basically studied and approved by a special committee and approved later on at the parliament states the following um, a, a woman is allowed to get her passport provided her father gives her a permission to do that to do so from the age of 16 to, to uh, <laughs> for, until the age sorry of 40 she may do that <laughs> and if the father is not alive or is, has not given her permission to do that she has to go to a special court to get a permission to do so in layahe nishandehande tarz tafakkur hukumat ast nisbat be huquq zan and this law shows clearly the view of the government about the situation and who women are in the country yani yek zan ta 40 salagi haq nadare safar kone magar inke yek mardi be u ijaze bede this means that a woman is not allowed to country until the age of 40 she is not allowed to leave the country until a man Uh, does not give her a permission to do so. And this is in a situation or in a country where the penal age for women is the age of nine. This means that if a girl who is nine, nine years old commits a crime, she will be judged in the same way as a man who is 50 years old. Yani dar kishvari ke masuliyat zanha az nuh saligi shuru mishe, amma azadi unha az ta chihel saligi wasi tahte nizarat yek mard bashe. This means that we are talking about a country where a woman's responsibility, legal responsibility, starts from the age of nine, but her true freedom starts at the age of 14. And the reason why we, ha we have this kind of laws, and these kind of laws are approved in the country, is because in Iran we have never had free elections. صلاحیت داوطلبین مجلس پارلمان بایستی قبلا به تایید شورای نگهبان برسه. Those who would like to participate in elections to become members of the parliament should be approved by a council before they participate on that election. شورای اعضای شورای نگهبان به وسیله مردم انتخاب نمی‌شوند. And this council is not elected by the people. بلکه به وسیله شش نفر مستقیما و شش نفر به صورت غیر مستقیم از سوی رهبر جمهوری اسلامی تعیین می شود. They are appointed by six people in an indirect way and those people are and at, uh, they are also appointed in a direct way by the supreme leader of the country. و هر کس که کوچکترین انتقادی به عملکرد سیاسی حکومت داشته باشه صلاحیتش رد میشه and obviously any person who criticizes in a very very small and minor way the government of the country he is not able or he is not allowed to participate in these elections بنابراین 
کسانی که در پارلمان هستند نمایندگان مردم نیستند و این طبیعی است که چنین قوانینی رو بنویسند. And therefore those who are members of the parliament are obviously not representing the people of the country and they are not able to defend the interest of those people either. تایید صلاحیت کاندیداها در هر انتخاباتی بایستی به وسیله همین شورای نگهبان باشه. And to authorize and to make these people able to participate on these elections, they should absolutely be approved by the members of this council. از جمله انتخابات ریاست جمهوری هم همینطوره. And also the same is true for the elections of the president of the country. در جون 2013 ما انتخابات ریاست جمهوری خواهیم داشت. In June, June of this year, 2013, we will have again the presidential elections in our country. اما این انتخابات هیچ امیدی بهش نیست و هیچ چیز رو آغاز نمیکنه. There is absolutely no hope on these elections, and nothing will change. برای اینکه کسانی که رقابت میکنند با هم دیگه فقط با اسی مورد تایید شورای نگه بود. Because those who will be competing on on this election will have to be approved by this council. And this makes the, the future of Iran be a dark one. Because people know that by elections they will not change anything. And things will only change if they are able to change the constitution of the country. And that is the reason why the elections are usually not approved. There's a group of people who do not participate in the elections. And what they believe, they say that we, are, we should not participate or take part in the theater that is, or in a play that is organized by the government. In Iran, people continue their fight in a peaceful manner. And women are at the forefront of this fight. And they are very creative in their fight for this change. Among these initiatives are the initiative of the Mothers for Peace. یا در زندان هستن عکس بچه ها رو در آغوش می گیرن و در روزهای شنبه در یکی از پارک ها دور هم جمع می شن. These are women whose children were, were killed and what they do is they take the photographs of their children and they embrace these photographs and they choose a day in a week where they go in the park and they gather together and they mourn the death of their children. یکی دیگر از ابتکارات زنان این است که برای زندانیان سیاسی پشت دیوارهای زندان جشن تولد می‌گیرند. Another way of a creative way of fighting is also an initiative of a group of people who actually go at the prison and behind the bars of the prison they celebrate the birthday of the prisoners. و به این ترتیب به یاد مردم می‌آورند که اینها چرا در زندان هستند. By doing so, they want to remind the people and remind them of why these prisoners are imprisoned. مردم ایران مبارزه خودشون رو به شیوه های مسالمت آمیز ادامه می دانند و می دانم که به زودی به دموکراسی خواهند رسید. The people of Iran will continue their struggle and their fight in a peaceful manner, and they know that soon they will reach victory. And the reason why this government is becoming more and more violent is because they are going weaker and weaker. And this is a sign that shows us how weak the government is. A government that is strong does not need violence. مردم گام به گام حکومت رو 
به عقب میرانند و حکومت از ترسش روز به روز خشنتر میشه اما روزی سقوط خواهد کرد people step by step will make that government become weaker and weaker and by feeling its weakness the government becomes more and more violent but one day very soon that government will end its its work متشکرم thank you Thank you very much, Shirin Nebadi. I would now like to welcome Malad Nasibova from Azerbaijan to the stage. Um, she is a journalist, a human rights activist, and she was in 2009 awarded the Raftor Prize for her struggle in, uh, in the fight for a free and independent press. She's been a correspondent for an independent information bureau called the Turan in Azerbaijan, and also for Radio Free Europe, Radio, uh, Radio Liberty. She is the leader for human rights organization, democracy and, NG democracy and NGOs Development Resource Center. And we are very pleased that you're here in Oslo. We know that you in the recent years have been called the so-called ombudsman for a number of people in Azerbaijan. Please, welcome. Mən də hamını salamlayıram və təşəkkür edirəm ki, bu gün bizim ölkələrin problemlərini dinləmək üçün bura toplaşmısınız. I'm also pleased to be here and greet everybody in, in, in this hall uh, and I am very thankful to you to come here and listen to the, uh, uh, the discussion of the problems in our countries. Və mən sizə qifti edirəm, özümə də, özümüzə də arzu edirəm ki, bizim də ölkəmizin problemləri bitsin və biz də digər ölkələrin problemlərini həll eləmək üçün toplaşaq. And I am jealous of you seeing that the, you are dealing with the problems uh, in, in other countries and I also wish to put an end to problems in our country and, and also to be able to build, deal with uh, the problems in some other countries. Bugün biz burada um, Oslo'da toplaşmışıq uh, müsəlman ölkələrində qadınların azadlıqlarını müzakirə etmək və bundan çıxış yolu tapmaq üçün. We gathered in Oslo uh, to discuss the, the, the problems, uh, the issues of uh, freedoms of women in Muslim world. Və talih elə gətirib ki, mənim həyatımda və mənim müsəlman qadını olaraq Artıq kişilərin hüquqlarını müdafiə eləməyə başlamışam. And then this is my destiny that the, uh, uh, actually I am dealing with the protection of the rights of men in my country. Və bu da bir nümunədir ki, artıq müsəlman qadınları da doğrudan da bütün dünya qadınları kimi uh, kişilərlə eyni hüquqlara malik ola bilərlər. And this is a, an example, bright example that the, the uh, women in Muslim world can have the same rights as the men have in, in different countries. <coughs> mən uh, bu il mənim Azərbaycanda mənim yaşadığım məmləkətdə prezident seçkiləri ilidir. This year is election year in Azərbaycan. Uh, və um, hər dəfə bu bizim yer hak hakimiyyətin uh, daxili siyasəti ki, hər dəfə seçkilər öncəsi uh, hakimiyyətin siyasətində daha da qəddarlaşma hissi olunur. And, and we usually observe uh, the more merciless uh, uh, um, uh, developments in the policy, domestic policy of Azerbaijan government uh, before the each elections in the country. Azerbaijanda hələ də 50 yaxın siyasi məhbus vardır. We still have uh, up to 50 uh, political prisoners in the country. Uh, hələ də 8-9 jurnalist həbsdədir. About 8-9 journalists are still in jail. Hətta İslamı uh, modern şəkildə dünyaya tanıtmaq istəyən İslamçılar da həbsdədir. And even the uh, Islamists, uh, uh, the religious group members who want to uh, introduce uh, Azerbaijan uh, in a secular way to the international community, they are also in, the pr in prisons. Və bu onun göstəricisidir ki, bizim hökumət sivil qaydalara riayət eləməməyə başlayıb və o bu ağır nəticələr ilə sonlana bilər. That means that Azərbaycan government does not want to respect human rights in the country and can 
uh, lead to dangerous results in the country? Uh, Azerbaijan parliament uh, Azerbaijan kanunlarına değişik irtizası değişiklikler etmeye başlayıbdı. Azerbaijan government uh, has amended several national laws. Ve bu değişiklikler uh, insanların serbest toplaşmasına, serbest faaliyetine, serbest fikirlerini azad ifade etmelerine böyük zərbə vurur. All these detrimental amendments uh, creates problems and uh, uh, damages uh, to the execution exercising of the rights of uh, of the people to different freedoms and rights ve ben size küçük bir misal demek istiyorum ki serbest toplaşma hakkında qanunla edilen değişikliğe göre eğer icazə verilməmiş mitinglər, aksiyalar, toplantılar keçirilirsə, həmin insanlar ə, küllü miqdarda ə, cərmə olunurlar və ya azadlıqdan məhrum edirlər. According to the latest amendments into the law about uh, uh, freedom of assembly and some other national laws in Azerbaijan, uh, the people who uh, tries to attend uh, unsanctioned rallies and uh, try to be organizer of those, uh, rallies uh, can be uh, fined by courts in a very uh, high amount of money. Ancaq bizim konstitusiyada sərbəst toplaşma haqqı azadlığı insanlara verilir və onlar bunun üçün icazə almamalıdırlar. And according to the constitution of Azerbaijan, uh, it, uh, the, the people uh, doesn't necessarily need to get a permission from uh, executive power. Uh, they just need to uh, warn them, just notify them. Ve iki gün evvel bizim ölçüde çetirilen aksiya zamanı, miting zamanı 24 nefer cenz hapse edilipti, saklanılıptı. Just two, uh, se several days ago, um, a group of young men uh, tried to stage a protest in the street uh, and they were um, uh, brought to the court and they were fined in a very high amount of uh, money. Ve mekemeler müstəqil olmayan mekemelerimiz tarafından onlara pul cezası kesilirdi ve bu elə bir məbləqdir ki o gənclər bu cezanı ödeyə bilmirlər. And these, these amounts are very high and they cannot be paid by these young men. Və indi bütün Azərbaycan, azadlıq sever Azərbaycan insanları hətta 5 kəpəkdən belə toplamağa başlayıb, aksiyaya keçirməyə başlayıb ki, bu gənclərin əvəzinə o pulu ödəsinlər. And even the freedom lovers in Azərbaycan started such a campaign to gather, to collect uh, um, uh, five cents by each in order to pay those uh, fines. Uh, Hepsi de olan jurnalistlerimiz çok ıı, iş fa, peşe faaliyetlerine göre hepsi olmaklarına bakmayarak onların üzerinde çok ağır ve ıı, maddeler vardı. Uh, Older the journalists in Azerbaijan are jailed because of their professional journalistic work, but uh, they are accused by accused by uh, uh, trumped up charges. Ə, bu maddələr ə, saxta maddələrdir və onların bir əksəriyyəti ə, cibinə nar narkotik maddə atılaraq həbs olunubdu. Bir hissəsi ə, verici yayınmalarına, yəni ə, şantaj ə, ə, səbəbindən ə, həbs olunubdu. Some of them were accused of tax evasion, some of them blackmailing, some of them uh, for, for drug possession, which are fake charges. Ve artık ə, Azerbaycan hakimiyeti beynalxalq təşkilatların hesabatlarına da ə, hesabatları ilə də hesablaşmamağa başlayıbdır. And Azerbaijan government also has started to ignore uh, the international reports and recommendations. Yani bütün ə, konvensiyalara qoşulmağına baxmayaraq Azerbaycan hökuməti hələ də bu günə kimi Avropa Şurasının təyin etdiyi siyasi məhbuslar üzrə məruzəsini Azerbaycana cənab Strasseri Azerbaycana bıraxmır. Older Azerbaycan is a party to the international uh, human rights conventions as a member of the and a member of the Council of Europe but it doesn't allow to uh, the special reporter by the Council of Europe on political prisoners issue to Azerbaijan to come and research the case. Yeah, the, bu, bu da ona göstərir ki, artıq hakimiyyət nə yolundan olur olsun, hansı yolundan olur olsun növbəti dəfə ə, öz hakimiyyətlərini uzun müddət qorumağa çalışırlar. All these attempts by the government uh, uh, the double confirms that the, um, the government uh, at any price wants to stay in power. 
Bu il keçirilən prezident seçkilərində artıq bizim Azərbaycan Respublikasının prezidenti ikinci dəfə seçilmiş prezidentdir. Ancaq onun partiyasının elan etdiyinə görə o artıq üçüncü dəfə namizətliyini ilərə sürmək istəyir. Bu da bizim konstitusiyaya görə qanuna ziddir. According to Azərbaycan Constitution, every citizen of Azərbaycan can be elected twice as president. And Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan's current president has already been elected twice, and uh, the new Azerbaijan party, which is the ruling party, is, is going to nominate him uh, for the third time. Və bizdə olan məlumata görə yenə də qanunlara irtizası dəyişiklər eləmək istəyib prezidentin ömrünü 2020-ci ilə qədər uzatmaq fikirlər, ideyaları vardır. And then, uh, we, we, uh, we know that the, uh, there is such uh, discussion at the high level uh, within the government that they want to make again uh, some detrimental changes into uh, uh, national laws and, and some uh, constitution as well and uh, to prolong the, uh, the term of the president till 2020. Artıq ölkədə fəaliyyət göstərən müstəqil və müxalifət yönlü qəzetlər iflasa uğramaq üzrədir. Uh, almost all uh, independent and proposition newspapers are uh, in, uh, this, uh, in this state of bankruptcy. Mən bir jurnalist kimi bu məni çox narahat edir və bu çox ağır verici hadisədir. I'm very concerned about uh, of the state of, of press in Azerbaijan as a journalist. Yani bu gazetelerin, bu metbaatların sıradan çıkma vaziyetlerin ağırlaşmasının sebepleri hakimiyet memurları hakkında yazılan yazılara koyulan mehçeme zermeleridir. And then the reason for such a, a, a very poor, very bad financial state of uh, press, independent press in Azerbaijan is uh, the uh, high amount of fines issued by courts against the newspapers and journalists that uh, write an article uh, about the uh, high-ranking officials. Ve mehkemelerin müstəqil olmaması, mehkemelerin hakimiyetin diktasiyle faaliyet göstermesi uh, bu sahada büyük problemler yaradır. And since the judiciary is not independent in Azerbaijan, it creates a very serious problems and challenges uh, in, in the field of human rights. Və Avropa məhkəmələrində, Avropa məhkəməsində qazanan məhkəmə proseslərinin çox olması onu göstərir ki, Azərbaycan məhkəmələri artıq fəaliyyətlərini tamamən hakimiyyətin diktəsi ilə yerinə yetirir. A number of the cases that are lost in the European Court for Human Rights shows that the Government also is, is doing something uh, with the European Court for Human Rights as well. Ancak buna bakmayarak Arab Baharından ruhlanıp bizim Azerbaycan'ın istimayeti artık mübarize yolunu seçipti ve bununla bu bu yolda kararlıdılar. And of course the Azerbaijani people are inspired by Arab Spring and they are very keen uh, in their way to freedom and uh, increase respect to human rights in the country. Sadəcə, bu yolda Azərbaycan istimaiyyətinin qətiyyəti ilə yanaşı beynəlxalq dəstəyə də ehtiyacımız vardır. But apart from being brave and courageous, of course, the people also need a, uh, international support in their struggle. Və bütün uh, beynəlxalq diqqəti Azərbaycana uh, yönətmək üçün uh, bizlər, hüquq müdafiəçiləri, jurnalistləri, jurnalistlər əlimizdən gələn edirik ki, bu alınsın. Of course, we are doing our best in order to... to bring a spotlight, international attention to the problems uh, of human rights in the country. Yani demek istedim, Azerbaycan'da söz azadlığı, siyasi azadlıqlar, iqtisadi azadlıqlar sayesinde vəziyyat olduqca gərgindir, pisdir. And uh, what I'm trying to stress on is that the, the situation around social, economical and political rights in the country uh, is, is uh, extremely tense and uh, worse. Və indi kiçik də olsa mən özümün yaşadığı məmləkətində Naxçıvanla danışmaq istəyirəm. I would like also just touch upon the problems in a province where I live in, which is Naxçıvan. Biz İranla çox yaxın sərhəddə yerləşdiyimiz üçün Şirin İbadi xanımın danışdığı bütün proseslər bizim də bölgəmizdə yaşanır. So we have a border with Iran and all concerns that was voiced here by Ms. Şirin İbadi 
uh, were also uh, observed in, Azer in, in that part of Azerbaijan as well. Bu çox pis haldır ki, İranda olan pis hallar artıq Naxçıvanda özünü göstərməyə başlayıbdı illər sonra. It's pity fact that the trends that are observed in Iran are also started to happen to take place in Naxçıvan as well. Qadınlar qapanmağa başlayıbdı, yəni artıq dini mərasimlər, dini, hətta toylar belə dini şəkildə keçirilir bu təhsil. Pis haldır, yəni bu təhlükəli haldır. Women started to cover themselves, have headscarves and all wedding parties are being organized in a way of religious. Qadınların erkən nicah, qızların erkən nicaha girməsi də bizim bölgənin ağrılarından, problemlərindən biridir. And early marriages are also very serious problems in that region. Ancaq buna baxmayaraq, mentalitetin bu ağır vəziyyətində olmasına baxmayaraq, bizdə də aktiv qadınlar vardır və onlar işləməyə çalışırlar. Older the mentality is suffering a lot from several programs in the region, but of course we have also some courageous women who are giving their struggle in their way. Bizim bölgənin problemi ondan ibarətdir ki, biz yazılmış qanunlarla, yox, biz təyin edilmiş qaydalarla idarə olunuruz bizim məmləkətdə. The another problem is that in the country there is not rule of law, but there are some verbal rules that rule the country. Və bu qaydalar çox ağır qaydalardır. And of course all these rules are very heavy. Yəni, bu qaydaları aşan, öz yüklarını tələb edənlər təyin. Psixodispanserlərə qatılırlar. And of course the people who want to strive for their rights, they are punished by the local government in a way to being taken to psychiatric hospitals. Artıq uzun illərdir ki, biz hər ay, hər ay, hər zaman, hər ay demək olar ki, həmin qospitalının qarşısında oluruq və oradan insanlarla əlaqə qururuq və oradakı insanları çıxarmağa çalışırıq orada. Çünki bilirik ki, onlar xəstə deyirlər, onlar sağlam insanlardır. Almost every once we organize a kind of campaign in front of the psychiatric hospitals and try just to get these people out of psychiatric hospitals. Deməli, türmiyə sağlanan insanlar da ən ağır işkəncələrə məruz qalırlar. Mən sizə işkəncənin bir növünü deyəcəyim, siz təsəvvür eləyəsiniz onu. And people in detention are often being subjected to torture. Deməli, bir ay əvvəl iş adamı, yəni kiçik biznesinə məşğul olan bir nəfər rüşvət tələb edildiyi üçün, rüşvət vermədiyinə görə həbsə olunubdur. A young businessman in our region was detained because he refused to give a bribe to the local officials. Və ona türmədə verilən işkənciyə eşidəndə doğrudan da biz dəşətə gəldik. And of course we got shocked by how he was tortured in detention cell. Və onun 60 yaşı vardı, ikinci qrup əvildi. He is a 60 years old man and he is an invalid. Deməli, Naxçıvanda 17 dərəcə şaxda var indi. The temperature is minus 17 in Naxçıvanda. Və bu insanı çılpaq soyunduraraq, çılpaq soyundurublar, çılpaq vəziyyətdə, divara dayanmış vəziyyətdə, yəni ayağı belə aralı və qolları çarpaz vəziyyətdə günlərlə saxlayıblar. And then he was actually forced to to to to be naked, and then he was put in put in the corner in detention cell in such a low temperature conditions. Və bu azmış şimin onun ayaklarına da həmin müddət soyuq su töçməyə başlayıblar. And while he was in in such a state, he he was also put on very extremely cold water. Və bizim araşdırmalarımıza görə bu dünyada işkəncə faktlarının altı, qəbul olmuş altı işkəncə faktının biridir. And this is one of the accepted six torture facts in the region. Və biz bunu tələb eləyəndə ki, bu məsələ araşdırılsın və onun bədənində olan hallar araşdırılsın, Ancaq biz bunu edə bilməyik, çünki tibbi ekspertiza hökumətin əlindədir. 
And we cannot do that. We, we fail to do that because the, everything is, is effectively controlled by the government. Ve bunu araştırmaya çalışan bizim merkezin resus merkezin emektaşları ile de benim hayat yoldaşım çok ağır dövülüpler fiziki tezikler bunu araştıracak bu mesela. Fiziki tezikleri meruz galiflar ve onların hakkında cinayet mezellesinin ihtişasa sebep yaratma faktı yine cinayet şaşırlar. Uh, my husband and one of our employee at the organization tried to uh, conduct an invest investigation of the case, uh, but instead uh, they were accused of um, uh, tr uh, initiating a public disorder uh, in the region, and now they, they, uh, they are expecting to be brought to the court. Yani bu demektir ki her an her dakika jurnalistleri bizleri uh, ağır hadiselerin göz uh, Ağır hadiseler gözləyir. So which means that we are working under very hard conditions and any time uh, uh, you can be under risk. Və mənim yaşadığım məmləkətdə ins, uh, vətənə xəyanət damğası vurulması aidi hala çevrilib. Yəni hakimiyyətin əlində aidi halda ki bir adamı vətənə xəyanətdə iddiam eləsin. And it's very easy in our region to accuse anyone uh, who are against the government of uh, high treason. Və mən hər dəfə belə uh, çıxışlardan sonra öz bölgeme dön gaydanda ve orada gazeteler sefe sefe benim hakkımda vatana hayalet eliyim problemlerle dünya ile bölüşürüm bu hakta geniş geniş mekaleler yazılır. After each uh, such speech I make uh, while I am outside at the international events uh, when I return uh, <coughs> the newspapers pro government newspapers uh, write different uh, articles blackening my image and calling me a person uh, betraying uh, her motherland. Ve bu o demek değil ki biz orada işlemirik, biz çalışmayacağız. Biz orada mübarizede devam edeceğiz çünkü biz inanırıq ki biz galip olacağız ve hala da ben uh, gülürümse, hala da sağamsa demeli mübarize devam edeyim. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we will give up, we will continue our struggle and strive for human rights and if I am still uh, smiling which means that uh, we are uh, on the way uh, to the achievements thank you very much thank you very much uh, malahat nasibova um, we'll now be moving a little bit more west to north africa and to Tunisia, a country we've heard a lot from, we've also heard a lot from in the recent years. Suher Belhassan, Mrs. Suher Belhassan, um, is from Tunisia, a journalist and an author. She's given a voice to the voiceless as a journalist and a writer. She's been exiled for her work as an author and a writer, and she's now back in Tunisia. She has been a clear voice for human rights under Ben Ali's dictatorship, and she's still a clear voice for human rights and the rights of women. She is currently the head of International Federation for Human Rights, FIDH, and she is here now in Oslo to share her views with us. So here, welcome. Bonsoir tout le monde, merci à la Fondation Rafto et merci au Nobel Peace Center de nous accueillir ce soir tous pour pouvoir échanger sur la situation de mon pays et au-delà peut-être de la région arabe. Good, good evening, everybody. I would like to thank the Rafto Foundation and the Nobel Peace Center to have gathered us together here today to talk about uh, the situation of human rights in my country and beyond that in the Arab region. Hier, c'était le deuxième anniversaire de la révolution tunisienne, celle qui a vu la chute du régime de Ben Ali. Uh, la révolution tunisienne qui a déclenché le printemps arabe dans toute uh, la région et 
qui a porté beaucoup d'espoir pour la dignité, la liberté et l'égalité. Deux ans après, que devient le printemps arabe Où en est la Tunisie aujourd'hui Yesterday, we celebrated the second anniversary of the fall of Ben Ali in Tunisia, uh, the Tunisian revolution which started the wave of protests which were the Arab Spring. Uh, this rev these revolutions that brought with them so many hopes for uh, freedom, dignity and justice. Two years afterwards, uh, where are we now? And in particular, what is the situation now in Tunisia? Vous pensez bien que pour une militante des droits humains, une militante de terrain, c'est un bonheur que d'avoir vu la chute de Ben Ali, la chute de Moubarak, la chute de Gaddafi. C'était quelque chose d'inespéré, mais qui nous est arrivé aujourd'hui. Et c'est vraiment un moment privilégié dans la vie d'une militante. You will imagine how amazing it was as a human rights defender to live through the fall of Ben Ali, of uh, Mubarak, of Gaddafi, uh, these moments which were unexpected uh, and so wonderful. Le, après la, la révolution, ce que nous avons pu constater, c'est que, évidemment, la Tunisie ne s'est pas effondrée. Tout a continué à fonctionner et même a très bien fonctionné puisque l'administration, les écoles, les transports, rien ne s'est arrêté dans ce pays. C'est qu'il y avait une structure de base et surtout des hommes et des femmes qui ont voulu que leur pays continue. In Tunisia, uh, when the regime fell, uh, the state didn't fall apart, uh, the institutions continued to function, uh, there was an infrastructure already present which meant that things could go on. Et donc, uh, ce que nous avons pu constater, surtout pour, uh, pour nous, uh, membres de la société civile, mais aussi pour les opposants, pour les journalistes, pour uh, les artistes, pour tout ce qui constituait les opposants au régime de Ben Ali, c'était euh, une explosion de la liberté d'expression, que ce soit les journaux, la télévision, que ce soit la rue, les manifestations de rue. Jamais on ne pouvait accéder à la rue. Tout d'un coup, tous les jours, il y avait des manifestations, sinon plusieurs fois par jour. Il faut vous dire que ça, c'est un changement extraordinaire. For all those who had opposed Ben Ali, journalists, human rights defenders, etc., uh, it was amazing to be able to descend into the streets and to have these spaces to protest that they'd never known before. On a vu ce qu'il faut souligner aussi, quelques-uns de nos combats aboutir. On a vu tout de suite la levée sur la CIDO, la convention sur les, euh, les discriminations à l'égard des femmes. On a vu euh, l'instauration euh, de la parité entre les hommes et les femmes sur les listes électorales, ce qui était exceptionnel. On a vu l'adhésion de la Tunisie au statut de Rome, ce qui constitue pour la Fédération internationale des droits de l'homme un, un, un moment euh, privilégié. Et surtout, on a vu une instance indépendante pour les élections conduire dès les élections euh, le 23 octobre de façon transparente et indépendante. So in the period after the fall of Ben Ali, uh, human rights defenders continued their struggle and they managed to obtain some victories. Uh, for example, the government, uh, transitional government, announced the withdrawal of reservations to the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, the, uh, there was the creation of uh, a body to supervise the first free and fair elections, uh, which were held on the 23rd of February 2011, uh, and uh, the Tunisian government ratified the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, all of which represent important steps uh, for uh, FIDH and, and the human rights. <coughs> 
il faut vous dire que euh, les, depuis le 23 octobre, depuis ces élections et l'accession des islamistes au pouvoir, l'effervescence révolutionnaire est retombée et aujourd'hui, on a euh, des autorités qui tiennent à avoir le pouvoir et tout le pouvoir. Dans toutes les régions de la Tunisie, il y a aujourd'hui un gouverneur de, du parti Enada qui est au pouvoir. So since the 23rd of October, the situation has changed. There's an Islamist government in power and a government which is searching to have all the powers. In each region, each locality, there is a, a, a government a representative uh, in, in control. Alors, les autorités tiennent un discours vers l'extérieur, vers l'Occident, en disant, nous prenons un islamisme modéré, euh, du type euh, de l'islamisme turc euh, à la Erdogan, un islamisme modéré, mais dans la réalité, ce que nous constatons aujourd'hui, c'est une islamisation de la société, même au prix de la violence. Et c'est ça qui est grave. So in the, um, their interactions with the Western countries and the image that they want to portray to the exterior, uh, the government points to um, Turkey as an example and says that it is going to uh, impose a moderate, modern Islam. Um, but what we perceive from inside the country is a progressive Islamization of society. Alors, il y a euh, deux types de conduite du gouvernement islamiste c'est laisser se développer la violence avec euh, les salafistes, le parti reconnu, qui est violent aujourd'hui, qui n'hésite pas à, à agresser et, et à tuer et, et euh, à interdire les manifestations de rue, à agresser les journalistes euh, qui ont une liberté, euh, qui exercent leur liberté, Heureusement encore aujourd'hui, mais aussi ce que veulent aussi les islamistes, mis à part la violence. Et il y a aujourd'hui des gardiens de la révolution. Et, et Chérine est là pour vous dire ce que c'est qu'en Iran les gardiens de la révolution. Et ils se conduisent exactement de la même façon en, en Tunisie. Il y a l'autre aspect, c'est l'islamisation de la société. Uh, and so this Islamization of society is imposed with violence, and we've seen an increase in violence of two types. Uh, there is a Salafist movement, a recognized Salafist movement now, which doesn't hesitate to use violence against, uh, against protesters, against uh, those expressing their, their freedom of expression. Uh, and we also see... Um, Uh, the guardians of the revolution, and Shirin uh, knows all about the guardians of the revolution, which is uh, the um, militia branch of the uh, Enada Islamist government in place in Tunisia. Et l'islamisation de la société commence par la répression des femmes. Parce que ce que cherche le parti Enada, c'est que la Tunisie moderniste et émancipée, elle doit disparaître. So the Islamization of society starts with repression of women. Uh, the image of a modern uh, Tunisia, an emancipated Tunisia, must disappear. C'est ce modèle unique dans le monde arabe. Ce n'est pas hasard si la révolution a eu lieu en Tunisie. C'est parce que c'est là où le statut des femmes est le plus émancipé, parce que leur, la législation permet le divorce, ce n'est pas la répudiation, le divorce devant les juges. La polygamie est le seul pays arabe et musulman où la polygamie n'existe pas. Et euh, depuis donc 1956, le droit des femmes est consacré. C'est contre cela que le parti Enada aujourd'hui euh, milite et nous observons des reculs. The women in Tunisia have a special status in the, in the region, in particular because of the personal status code adopted in 1956, uh, which means that women have access to divorce before the courts rather than repudiation, which means that polygamy does not exist. Uh, and today we are observing uh, threats to those rights. Par exemple, c'est le seul pays où l'adoption alors, 
que dans tous les euh, euh, autres pays musulmans, l'adoption euh, elle est interdite par le Coran. Eh bien, en Tunisie, c'est elle est l'adoption est permise par la loi et tout à fait au début quand les islamistes sont parvenus au pouvoir ils ont essayé d'aller de supprimer cette loi uh, Tunisia is one of the only countries in the region where adoption uh, is authorized uh, it's mainly considered in other countries to go against uh, the precepts of the Quran Um, but in Tunisia, it, it has been uh, permitted, uh, and uh, when the new Islamist government came into power, they started talking about removing this possibility to adopt. C'est un pays, la Tunisie, qu'on ne reconnaît pas. Quand on, quand on prend un avion, et, et moi je le fais souvent entre Paris et, et Tunis, quand on débarque, on se dit, je me suis trompé de pays, parce que les femmes... Il y a des femmes en niqab, alors que ça n'existait pas il y a deux ans. Et il y a surtout, et c'est là euh, le danger, quand je parle d'islamisation des sociétés, on sépare les filles des garçons dans certaines écoles privées, dans les jardins d'enfants, on aimait le hijab à des enfants de trois ans. So the signs of the islamization of society are very visible. Uh, I often uh, take flights from Tunis to Paris, uh, and sometimes when I come back to Tunis, I think I'm in the wrong country, uh, because things that were unimaginable two years ago, uh, now, for example, I see uh, very many women wearing the niqab, the full veil, uh, and uh, in um, play playgrounds of small children, uh, there are na there's now a separation <coughs> a separation between boys and girls, uh, whereas mixity in schools has existed for 50 years. L'autre aspect, c'est les violences qui sont exercées, en particulier à l'égard des femmes, pour les terroriser, pour leur faire peur, pour qu'elles abandonnent euh, euh, le combat ou simplement qu'elles ne vivent pas de la même façon qu'elles vivaient jusqu'ici, c'est-à-dire d'une manière libérée et moderniste. Elle est aujourd'hui, les femmes euh, sont euh, victimes de violences. Et je cite l'exemple euh, des gardiens de, de, de la révolution euh, qui ont euh, arrêté et agressé un jeune couple euh, qui était un jeune couple d'amoureux. Mais au-delà, ce qui était très grave, c'est que une femme Victime, qui était avec son ami dans une voiture, a été victime de viol par trois policiers. Et quand elle a eu le courage de porter plainte avec son ami, elle est devenue, elle, de victime et elle est euh, devenue, euh, elle, accusée, accusée par les policiers. So women are targeted uh, in order to prevent them for continu from continuing their combat for their rights or simply to make them change their behaviors. Uh, for example, the Guardians of the Revolution, to which I referred, uh, uh, stopped a young couple in the street. They were, um, they, violence was used against them. Um, and another example is a, a, a couple um, The, who were stopped by policemen. Uh, the woman was uh, raped by three uh, policemen. Uh, and then when she complained about the rape, she found herself accused of uh, an attack on morality and herself uh, prosecuted before the courts. Et aujourd'hui, ce qui, ce qui est euh, important, c'est que la liberté d'expression également est menacée. Je ne vous parle pas des artistes qui ont vu leurs œuvres détruites euh, au cours euh, d'une exposition qui était considérée comme euh, trop libertaire. So today also freedom of expression is threatened. Uh, for example, artists who put on an exhibition, uh, it was attacked because it was considered to be too liberal ou d'une directeur de télévision qui vient d'être condamnée à trois ans de prison pour avoir imité le chef de Nada Ganouchi avec les guignols. Uh, or a head of a television channel 
uh, who uh, was uh, prosecuted and sentenced uh, to a year in prison, three years in prison, uh, because he uh, imitated Ganushi, uh, the leader of the Islamist movement, by showing a, a, a sort of spitting image uh, program uh, using puppets of political figures. Ou d'une très jeune journaliste qui a osé dénoncer à la télévision les, euh, le, le, le ministre des Affaires étrangères du parti islamiste euh, qui a payé sur le budget des affaires étrangères sa petite l'hôtel pour sa petite amie à l'hôtel Sheraton ou parce que il a reçu un chèque des autorités chinoises directement sans passer par le budget de l'État. Alors cette fille qui a fait cette dénonciation aujourd'hui se trouve devant les tribunaux. Or, uh, I cite also the example of a young journalist woman uh, who uh, published information about the fact that uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs had taken his girlfriend to a hotel using uh, the state budget or money that he received from the Chinese authorities which didn't go through uh, the state budget account. Uh, she found herself uh, prosecuted. La justice, malheureusement, elle est toujours aussi manipulé que du temps de Ben Ali. Today, et on n'a pas fait de progrès de à ce niveau-là, et la torture existe. Today, we find that the justice system is instrumentalized and manipulated as it was at the time under the regime of Ben Ali, uh, and we also have documented uh, cases of torture. Cette situation que je vous décris, évidemment, euh, très rapidement, appelle une vigilance de votre part des pays amis de la Tunisie, de certains pays de la région, mais de la Tunisie en particulier, parce que la Tunisie, symboliquement, le symbole de la Tunisie est, est très fort. Uh, so the situation that I have described to you very briefly um, calls for vigilance from uh, countries who are friends of countries in the region, and in particular, I'm talking to you about Tunisia, uh, strong vigilance as to what is happening uh, to the situation of human rights in, in my country. Vous vous doutez bien que la FIDH, qui regroupe 160 orga 164 organisations en son sein, est mobilisée sur cet objectif. Mais il y a aujourd'hui euh, des violations qui sont commises exactement de la même façon que, que du temps de Ben Ali. Et il n'est pas question aujourd'hui que des pays amis de la Tunisie disent euh, on n'était pas au courant comme du temps de Ben Ali. Aujourd'hui, il n'est pas permis de dire on n'était pas au courant. Um, so you will imagine that the situation of human rights in the region and in Tunisia uh, greatly mobilizes FIDH and its 164 member organizations. Um, today, uh, countries that are, are friends uh, of the countries in the south of the Mediterranean and Tunisia in particular uh, cannot do as they did at the under the regime of Ben Ali and say we did not know what was happening, we couldn't do anything. Uh, today, that is not possible. Uh, governments know what is happening and they must uh, remain <coughs> very vigilant about violations of human rights. Uh, sous le prétexte de ne pas vouloir faire de l'ingérence dans ces pays et de se conduire comme un pays néocolonialiste, on préfère fermer les yeux et passer et continuer à passer des accords de partenariat. Uh, under the pretext that states must not interfere in the eternal, internal affairs uh, of other countries, uh, that they uh, do not want to uh, have a colonialist approach, uh, countries justify closing their eyes and in, in, um, continuing to conclude partnership agreements. On ne peut pas, on, on, on ne peut plus aujourd'hui passer des, des accords de partenariat en oubliant que les droits de l'homme sont tous les jours, au quotidien, foulés par euh, les autorités. Today, it is not possible for states to conclude partnership agreements with countries like Tunisia while ignoring uh, the violations of human rights that occur on a daily basis. Alors, un pays comme la Norvège, où les femmes ont conquis depuis euh, déjà 
un siècle le droit de vote, le, un pays comme la Norvège ne peut pas se permettre d'ignorer cette situation. A country like Norway, where women acquired the right to vote a hundred years ago, uh, cannot allow itself to ignore what is happening in the country. C'est en, en se montrant vigilant qu'on évite des situations extrêmes comme nous le voyons en, au Mali aujourd'hui, qui exige une intervention militaire. Donc, pour éviter ce genre de situation, soyons vigilants. It is necessary to be vigilant today in order to avoid situations like the terrible situation in Mali, which has ended with a, a military intervention. It's important to, to be vigilant today so as not to arrive at that point. Les jeunes de Sidi Bouzid, qui ont milité, qui sont sortis dans la rue, qui sont morts pour, euh, le, euh, pour la dignité, pour la liberté, pour l'égalité, méritent aujourd'hui qu'on fasse attention aujourd'hui à eux, qu'on les accompagne dans leurs revendications contre, pour la dignité et la justice. Nos révolutions politiques ne réussiront que si elles sont accompagnées de révolutions sociales. So those who started the revolution in Sidi Bouzid, the young people who began these movements, uh, they deserve that we accompany them in their demands for freedom, equality, justice, uh, and uh, the political revolutions which have taken place must be accompanied by social revolutions. Uh, notre lutte, ce que je veux vous dire, c'est que notre lutte ne peut pas attendre demain. La période que nous vivons est déterminante pour l'avenir de la Tunisie, mais au-delà de la région arabe. Et la question des droits des femmes est au cœur du processus que nous voulons avoir dans cette région pour laquelle nous militons et nous devons rappeler sans cesse à ce propos qu'il ne peut pas y avoir de démocratie sans égalité. My message to you this evening is that this struggle cannot wait for tomorrow. Uh, the period that we are living through will be determinative for women's rights. Uh, the issue of women's rights must be at the heart of political processes in all the region. Uh, and we must uh, repeat uh, that there cannot be democracy without equality. Il faut continuer donc à se battre pour l'universalité et l'indivisibilité des droits. C'est ça qui prépare les véritables révolutions et c'est le combat qu'il faut que nous menons ensemble. Merci. Just do the last phrase. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will now invite um, all the three women and the translators onto the stage for our uh, discussion and conversation. I'd also like to remind uh, everyone, also the people out there <laughs> who are, being, uh, who are uh, watching us through the websites, etc., that uh, it is possible to send in questions um, via your mobile or where, uh, wherever you may be, um, via Twitter. Hashtag speak up. Speak up in one word and in English, speak up. Please. Thank you. 
Mrs. Uh, Shirin Abadi, Mrs. Malahat Nasibova, and uh, Mrs. Suhair Belhassan. You're all witnesses of um, three very different countries. You've described some very severe um, human rights situations. And you have, um, but you also live in three different, very different political systems. You're all Muslim societies. But your interpretation of the role of Islam within the state is to me very different. And I'd like to ask each and every one of you, what are your commonalities despite being such different political systems? I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Shirin Nebadi first. Iran <laughs> در شرایطی بود که امروز تونس هست و شما شنیدید. In the year um, 1000 in the year 1979 Iran was in the same position um, as Tunis is and many other countries nowadays. بگی فقط تونس رو بگی. در سال 1979 ما یک دیکتاتور که مورد حمایت غرب بود in 1979, we managed to throw out of the country a dictator. And he was under the protection of the Western countries. And so the people of Iran were not happy with, uh, with the West because the West has been supporting uh, the dictator in their country for many years. And uh, is Islamism has become something that they use to fight against the West. And in this way, and in this manner, the people uh, showed their struggle and their fight against the West and against, against the U.S. And this has helped the uh, Islamic radicals to get into the power. And and so gradually, uh, the, we have ha we ha we managed to establish a religious dictatorship in the country. And we have been having this religious dictatorship for the past 33 years in Iran. And it has made the people of Iran who are Muslims to become secular. Yani mardom Iran Muslimanan, amma natijeye yek hukumat mazhabi ro didan va mikhahand hukumat az mazhab joda shavat. This means that the Iranians, the people in Iran, they are Muslims, but they have become secular because they have seen the effect of a religious government. And what they want is that for religion and politics or the state to be separate. 
از این جهت مردم ایران چون این تجربه رو دارن از کشورهای که بهار عرب رو شروع کردن جلوتر and because in iran we've had this experience we've gone through this experience we are a step ahead of those countries who belong to the arab spring در تونس همین اتفاق افتاد and in tunis the same thing has happened بن علی مورد حمایت غرب بود بن علی was under the protection of the west و به علامت مخالفت با and the Islamic, uh, the Islamist groups have uh, reached power because uh, they have uh, they have hated the way the West has protected Ben Ali and the dictator in the country for many years. در شروع بهار عرب من و چند نفر از مسلمان های ایرانی یک نامه نوشتیم. At the very beginning of the Arab Spring, I wrote a letter together with a group of, uh, of colleagues, of Iranian friends. We've written that letter and we have warned the people of uh, Tunisia, of Egypt and Libya We've warned them and said to them, don't do the same mistakes as we did. And I hope that people of Tunis and Iran will be able to get out of And I really hope that the Tunisian people, the Egyptians and the Libyans have learned a lesson watching at the experience and what has happened in Iran. و در حکومت آینده ایران حکومت آینده ایران مسلما سکولار خواهد بود and the future government in iran will definitely be, definitely be a secular one برای اینکه مردم تجربه کردن که حکومت مذهبی یعنی چه because people have had the experience of what is it to have a religious government و خیلی جالبه که حتی برخی از روحانیون ما هم and it is very interesting to know that some of our religious leaders have exactly the same opinion. They are obviously not on any political power. But they believe that religion should be separated, uh, separated from the state. And the برای مردم شیعه ایران خیلی محترمه. And that is why Ayatollah Sistani who is now living in Iraq he is very respectful for the Iranians. برای اینکه از ابتدا اعلام کرده بود که مذهب نبایستی داخل در سیاست بشود. Because from the very beginning he had stated that religion should not appear in the in politics. Sistani یک روحانی عراقیه. Sistani is an Iraqi religious man. And from the history that Iraq has attacked the Iraqi government, the leaders of Iraq have tried to meet with him. And from the date where the U.S. invaded Iraq, the American authorities have tried many times to actually meet up with Sistani, but he never accepted. Sistani said that I سمت سیاسی ندارم هیچ کس با هیچ کس صحبت نمی کنم. And Sistani said that I don't have any political power and I will not receive anyone. و این از این جهت مردم ایران جلو یک گام جلوتر از بهار عرب هستند. And that is why I say that uh, Iranians are a step ahead of the people in the, in the Arab Spring. Hmm. Mrs. Uh, Suheb Al Hassan What do you feel when you say that they're a step ahead and you were warned? On a été averti, mais ça c'est on ne peut pas empêcher ni une personne ni un peuple de vivre sa propre expérience. Malheureusement, même si elle est 
mauvaise, euh, et même si elle n'est pas positive. Et en l'occurrence, là, ce que nous sommes en train de vivre en Tunisie, c'est euh, une expérience d'un gouvernement islamiste et qui est en train de provoquer un rejet. So we were warned, but you cannot prevent a population from living through its own developments. Uh, and uh, what we are living through today in, in Tunisia is an Islamist government which is provoking its own uh, refusal, rejection. Mais je ne crois pas, uh, malheureusement, uh, que ce rejet uh, va aller uh, changer le résultat des prochaines élections qui vont à avoir uh, lieu en, en 2000, à la fin de, de 2013. Uh, But I don't think that this rejection, which is just beginning, will change the results of the elections which will take place at the end of 2013. Pourquoi? Parce que on a une opposition euh, qui est faible. Why? Et Because we have a weak opposition. D'une part, et d'autre part, et surtout, euh, les laïcs se battent. Les laïcs, c'est-à-dire, on veut la séparation euh, de l'État et du religieux. C'est essentiel aujourd'hui dans nos pays, comme vient de le dire euh, Shirin, l'exemple iranien est là pour euh, le dire, et donc pour nous c'est très clair, il faut absolument la séparation du religieux et de l'État. Mais évidemment nous sommes loin euh, d'y parvenir, c'est une lutte, c'est un combat qu'il faut euh, savoir euh, mener, euh, sans, sans exclure, parce que dans les pays de religion musulmane où 90% sont musulmans, il est très difficile euh, de faire euh, accepter que l'État et le religieux soient séparés. C'est okay. un processus qu'il faut entamer. Uh, of course, we believe that there absolutely must be a separation between the state and religion, uh, and uh, Shirin's example, Iran, uh, reminds us of this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are far from achieving this uh, at the moment. Uh, it's a struggle which will be continuous. Uh, states where uh, more than 90% of the population are Muslim, uh, in those states it, it is very difficult uh, to advocate for the separation of uh, the state and religious powers. Mm -hmm. Alors, il y a une tendance, et, et ça je voudrais une tendance, surtout en Occident, euh, et en Europe en particulier, mais en Occident de façon générale, de dire, mais il euh, y a un islam modéré, c'est la réalité euh, de des pays de la région et des pays musulmans. Or, euh, ce n'est pas, euh, pas si vrai que ça. C'est ce la réalité, mais il ne faut pas, ça ne veut pas dire qu'il faut l'accepter. Il faut, au contraire, lutter pour que le religieux soit séparé euh, euh, du politique. C'est ça l'essentiel. C'est parce qu'aujourd'hui, il n'y a pas d'islam modéré. Il y a un islam, il y a une idéologie, une idéologie politique qui veut avoir, le prendre le pouvoir et le garder. Um, there is a tendency in Europe and in the West in general uh, to say that there is a now a, a type of moderate political Islam. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't the reality that we're living through. Um, and we must fight for the separation of, of uh, state power and religious power. I think you said something else. Oui. Mrs. Malahat uh, Nasibova, when you hear this um, one very recent example of a revolution or up uprising, Arab Spring, and you hear an older example, very different example of a revolution, of a change, and you yourself ask for a change, what are the lessons that you take from this? from the two situations, for your situation? Of course, the people in Azerbaijan are, are inspired by Arab Spring for the changes. But of course, the uh, religious situation is, is rather different uh, from the ones 
that exist in, in some other countries. Yani bizde de müxtəlif dini cəryanlar var ki, onlar da öz cəryanlarının rəhbər tutduğu qaydaları yaymağa çalışırlar. Amma bu, əsasən regionlardadır, sərhət bölgələrində də, hansı ki, onlar İranla çox yaxın sərhətdə yerləşirlər. And of course, there are religious groups that are trying also just somehow to have political agenda for the future. And then mainly these political groups are located in the southern regions of Azerbaijan, which are having borders with Iran. Azab, bizdə fərqli tərəf bir ondadır ki, bizdə İslamı ağıllı şəkildə, yəni dünyəvi qaydalara bərabər şəkildə yaymağa çalışan dini cəryanlar da vardır. But of course, there are also some religious groups that are having very peaceful agendas and they think that the Islam İslam rules should exist together with the secular rules. Və bu ölkədə dini hərəkətləri balanslaşdırır. And of course, it somehow is keeping the balance in the situation. Ancaq bizdə fərqli tərəf hakimiyyətdən dini qurumlarla davranışıdır. But of course, the... The attitudes by the government towards the religious groups in the society in the country is rather interesting in our case. Və bizim hakimiyyət dini qurumların təhlükəsindən o qədər qorxur ki, yəni o qədər təzik edir ki, bu dini qurumlara, bu dini qurumlar artıq radikallaşmağa başlayır. Actually, Azərbaycan government is increasing its pressure over religious groups in the country that might lead a radicalization of uh, uh, religious groups. Yani bu bu böyük bir təhlükə yarada bilər bizim hakimiyyət dəyişikliyinə. Əgər belə davam edərsə, yəni bu hücumlar davam edərsə, bu qədər insan haqları və yaxud da bu İslami haqlar pozularsa, yəni İslamçılar haqları pozularsa, biz gözləyirik ki, hər an qeyri-adi bir hərəkət baş versin və hər an İslamçılar hakimiyyəti devrər bilsin. Bu, gözlənilməyən bir şey deyil bizim ölkə üçün. If such a pressure would be continuous by the government towards the religious groups in the society, we think that in the future it might be, there might be some other changes which would lead to religious groups coming to power. And then we observe that the violation of the rights of the religious believers are continuing. We have we have received a question here um, um, on Twitter via Twitter from Amnesty International, and the question is um, to Mrs. Suer Belhassan: um, Is Islamization a bigger threat to women's rights than the former repressive regimes in the Middle East, North Africa? Oui. Oui. Oui. I'm glad you're uh, in interest of time. I'm glad you're short and concise. Was it clear? Any any other? Would you like to, um, Mrs. Shirin Abadi? Elle m'avait dit de répondre vite et clairement. Clairement. Oui. Oui. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Islam Gerai me tawanat zed de zan bashad chanan ke ma dar Iran shahid hash hash shahid hash budi. Islamism can be can work against women because we have seen it happen in Iran. Amma yek soal matrah mishe. But there is a question here. Jai ke mardom khodeshun be yek hizbe اسلامی رای میدن و اون به قدرت میرسه باید چیکار کرد؟ What should we do in a country where there is elections and a religious and Islamic political group reaches power? What should be done there? بونوان مقدمه گفتم که من به سکولاریسم معتقدم. In the introduction, I said that I believe in secularism. اما اگر در یک انتخابات آزاد حزب اسلامی به قدرت برسه و به حکومت در دست بگیره چیکار بایستی کرد؟ But if in a free elections 
a religious and Islamic uh, political party wins that election and reaches power, what should we do in that country? آیا ما می توانیم بگوییم مردم حق ندارند به احزاب اسلامی رای بدهند؟ Do we have the right to say people are not allowed to vote to religious or Islamic political parties? آیا ما می توانیم به مردم بگوییم که مسلمان نباشید؟ Can we tell people not to be Muslims? هیچ کنم مسلما نه. Obviously we can't say that. پس راه حل چیست؟ So what is the solution? بایستی تفسیر درستی از اسلام ارائه بدهیم که با ضوابط حقوق بشر انتباق داشته باشه. We have to show a correct interpretation of Islam, an interpretation that respects fully the principles of human rights. و به مردم, مردم مسلمان رو قانع بکنیم که می توانید مسلمان باشید اما به حقوق بشر هم احترام بگذارید. And convince Muslims that you can be Muslims and you can also respect human rights principles. شما نگاه کنید به بنیادگرایی اسلامی که در اروپا هست. Look at the Islamic fundamentalism in Europe. در فرانسه بیشتر است. In France more than any other country in Europe. افرادی که دو یا سه نسلشون تو فرانسه هستن روز به روز دارن بنیادگراتر میشن. Those who are second or third generations in, in France of immigrants in France they are more and more fundamentalists. آیا اینجا هم مسئله سیاست و حکومت در بینه؟ Can we, can we say that here also we have a problem of religion and, and state and the separation of religion and state? نه پس اینجا پس راه حل در یه چیز دیگه است. So obviously the answer is no. The solution to this is in a different thing altogether. و این راه حل راه حل فرهنگیه. And the solution is, is a cultural one. و ما بایستی ثابت بکنیم تفسیر و ما باید ارائه بدهیم تفسیر درستی از اسلام رو. We have to show a correct and a right interpretation of Islam. به عنوان مثال. For example. من چون کم حرف زدم الان یه ذره بیشتر میخوام بگم. Because I spoke very little at the beginning, okay. I'm going to use my time now. <laughs> در فرانسه و در اروپا قانونی گذشته که منع میکنه زنها صورت زنای مسلمان صورتشون رو بپوشونن. So in in France and in some European countries a law has been passed that prevents uh, that does not allow women to cover their faces. و میگن که این برای امنیت برای اینکه مسائل امنیتی They say it's because of security reasons. زنای برخی از زنای بنیادگرای مسلمان با این قانون مخالفن. And a group of fundamentalist Islamic Muslim women are against this law. و اینها با من صحبت میکردن. They spoke to me. و میگفتن ببینید اینجا آزادی نداریم. ما دلمون میخواد اینطوری لباس بپوشیم. ما رو آزاد نمیذارن. And they said look We are we not free here. We want to dress the way we want to dress, and they don't give us our freedom. We we are not free. Man, goftam, halal biyan as shoma ye sual mikona. And I said to them, well, I have a question for you. Shoma vakti ke miri be Mecca baraye Hajj, chetori lebas mepuchi. I said to them, when you go to Mecca for pilgrimage, how do you dress up? گفتن که خب منظور چیه؟ they said what do you mean؟ گفتن شما میدونید وقتی که به مکه میرید حق ندارید صورتتون رو بپوشونید. I told them well, you know when you go on pilgrimage to Mecca you are not allowed to cover your faces. و اساسا این در اسلام هر ممنوعه. And this is absolutely against uh, Islamic principles. This is not uh, you are not allowed to do so in Islam. گفتن شما وقتی که عبادت میکنید نبایستی صورتتون رو بپوشونید. و الا اون عبادتتون قبول نمیشه ممنوعه when you pray you're not allowed to cover your faces if you do so it's not accepted your prayers are not accepted <coughs> پس بنابراین چرا شما ناراحت هستید از اینکه به شما بگن حق ندارید صورتتون رو بپوشونید این که اسلام نیست why are you so sad and angry about the fact that you can't cover your faces this is not islam 
چیزی نداشتن بگن. They had no answer to that. و جالبه که خیلی از اونا گفتن که ما به این مسئله فکر نمی کردیم که یعنی متوجه این قسمت قضیه نبودیم. And it's interesting how some of them said well, we never really thought about this part of, uh, of what you said. We never even thought about this. این یه مثال این یک مثال خیلی کوچیکه. This is a very small example I'm, I'm offering you here. Um, و من میخوام به شما بگم که ما میتونیم ما باید زنهای بنیادگرا رو قانع بکنیم که میتونن مسلمان باشن اما طور دیگری زندگی کنن. We have to convince fundamentalist Muslim women that they can be Muslims and they can live differently. و راه حل اینه. And I think the solution is this. و ب... اگر موفق بشیم دیگه مردم به احزاب رادیکال اسلامی رای نمیدن. And if we succeed in this, people will no longer vote to uh, give their votes to fundamentalist uh, uh, Islamic uh, political parties. Mrs. Shirinavadi, thank you. I'd like to open up for questions from the, um, from the audience. And I already see a number of different questions. We have, um, we are short of time, um, but we want to have as many questions as possible. So please be short, precise, concise. Um, present yourselves and ask your question. Remember there are translators here as well, so be short, please. Thank you. I'm Anvi Becker again, University of Oslo. Uh, we run a cooperation project with the university in Azerbaijan for uh, almost uh, for five years now. Um, question, um, I have seen that uh, uh, Azerbaijani also official authorities defined, uh, define opposition as enemies of the country. How could this uh, be met ideologically? How could it be responded to? Mənə edə gəlir ki, bu tək Azərbaycan hakimiyyətində yox, bütün hakimiyyətlərdə müxalifət hakimiyyətlər tərəfindən normal qəbul edilmir. It's not only about Azərbaycan government, in some other countries also the opposition is not accepted by by the governments in the right way. Və Azərbaycan hakimiyyətinin müxalifəti bu cür qəbul etməsi onun irticacılığından xəbər verir. Actually, such a uh, notion, such a uh, definition of Azerbaijan opposition by the Azerbaijan government is, is a, is a uh, very vivid uh, sign of uh, uh, aggressive uh, nature of, of the power in Azerbaijan. Və biz Azərbaycan hökumətinin diktatorluq kimi qəbul edirik və diktatorlarda hər zaman müxaliflərə qarşı agresiv yanaşma irəli sürür. And then we, we think the government in Azerbaijan is, is, uh, is a dictatorial government. There's a dictatorship established in the country, so that's why uh, uh, uh, the, the government is rather aggressive and merciless uh, towards uh, Və bizim Azərbaycan hakimiyyətinin ideologiyasında tək hakimiyyətli üstünlüyü vardır. Yəni, bunu istəyir. And what the Azərbaycan government wants is to have the power that couldn't be revised or criticized by others. One party rule in the country. Any other questions? One right there. It's behind there. Sorry, just behind. Uh, I have a question uh, to Suhair uh, Belhasan. My name is Nefis Oskar Lorenson. I'm a filmmaker, and right now I'm making a film about Islam and masculinity. Um, I, uh, my question, you said that um, gender segregation is one of the visible signs for Islamization. Is there any hope for gender revolution, or we can say a s gender spring in Muslim world, where men are ready to give their privileges? Uh, how can we persuade them? And how can we take them with us? Uh, we can create laws and everything, but we have laws in Muslim countries, but we don't have any implementations. Thank you.
je pense que c'est effectivement un, un, une révolution qui prendra euh, énormément euh, de temps si on parle euh, du genre. Déjà, euh, au niveau de l'égalité des droits entre les hommes et les femmes, c'est quelque chose d'extrêmement compliqué et, et qui provoque, euh, qui provoque l'opposition euh, de pas seulement les islamistes, mais nous sommes dans des sociétés conservatrices, il ne faut pas euh, l'oublier, et que euh, la femme a un, un rôle assigné d'avance, presque à, à la naissance. Et, Um, so if we're talking about a gender revolution, it's sure that it will take a long time. Uh, in our societies, even speaking about equality between men and women is very complex and provokes a lot of opposition, not only from Islamists, uh, but from others, because it must be remembered that we live in very conservative societies. Et que uh, cette uh, égalité, c'est un... Um, euh, Aujourd'hui, on, on, on a euh, des, des problèmes déjà pour maintenir le combat euh, des femmes pour l'égalité. Uh, Et cette, euh, ce combat, euh, aujourd'hui, il est euh, à la fois euh, difficile parce qu'il y a une opposition euh, du gouvernement, mais du, des autorités, disons, et, et même des, les autorités, mais aussi du parti islamiste. Aujourd'hui, l'opposition est plus déclarée que du temps euh, des dictateurs. Quand on est opposé, on peut s'exprimer. Et c'est positif et négatif, parce que, évidemment, tous ceux qui s'opposent à l'émancipation des femmes, et donc pour l'égalité, euh, peuvent... Euh, s'exprimer, mais également l'autre versant, c'est-à-dire ceux qui euh, se battent au, au quotidien pour, euh, pour l'égalité, eh bien, euh, aussi peuvent s'exprimer. Mais ce n'est plus à égalité dans la mesure où, aujourd'hui, le pouvoir est tenu par les islamistes. Mmh. Tu te retrouves Oui. Um, it's a very difficult uh, struggle, uh, in particular now that there is an Islamist party in power, uh, although there is more freedom of expression now, and so people can speak out, uh, there is a, an imbalance uh, in the strength of the discourse, on the one hand, uh, from those who oppose the emancipation of women, uh, and on the other hand, those who are fighting for women's rights. This imbalance Uh, caused by uh, the fact that the, those in power, those in, in political power, uh, are from the Islamist tendency. Et c'est là que des organisations comme les nôtres, comme la FIDH ou, ou RAFTO, ou, peuvent jouer un rôle d'encouragement de, de, de, de l'émancipation. C'est réellement en, en mettant les réseaux ensemble, en, en vivant la solidarité que nous avons déjà vécu euh, avec euh, les défenseurs des droits humains sur la situation des femmes. Cette solidarité doit continuer à jouer et c'est ça les leviers qui peuvent faire avancer les situations euh, dans nos pays. Uh, and the importance of organizations like FIDH and the Rafto Foundation and others uh, playing a role in, in uh, this situation, encouraging uh, women to uh, seek emancipation, uh, it will be very important. Uh, we can build networks, uh, we can uh, uh, build solidarity uh, between uh, human rights defenders, uh, and we must focus that solidarity today on the question of women's rights. We are receiving messages from um, all around the world. We just received a message from India. And the question is, how can Indian women work with you to bring collective change? And furthermore, there's a question from Norway, which is, how can Norwegian women? I'd like to add something. Sure. Hmm? Uh, 
I have a question. Well, I actually have two questions to ask you. We're short of time, so. So, so I, have, I will only say my questions and please reflect on my questions. آیا همه مرد فکر می‌کنید همه مردای مسلمان ضد زن و خشنن؟ سوال اول. So first. <laughs> آیا فقط مردای مسلمانن که ضد زنن؟ بقیه مردا خیلی خوبن؟ سادرو. So, I have a question, two questions to ask you. So, do you really think that it's only a Muslim men who are against women, and they are only the bad ones here? <laughs> First question. Oh, another, qu another question. So is, is it only that Muslim men are against the rights of women and they don't respect women in this world? It's only mo Muslim men who don't do that? Pass me over in film that you want to make a film, just be about the Muslim men, not the Muslim men, not the Muslim men. So I suggest that the film you want to make, I urge you not to make it only about Muslim men, make it about all men in the world who don't respect women, please. <laughs> so that brings me to, to the question of, you came here to Oslo as three women from Muslim societies. Was that coincidental? Last year, we were invited by the Rafto Foundation to be together. And this, the question was, are, the, are we able to create a network together, work together and create that network? و در اون نتورک به مسائل و مشکلات مشترک زنهای مسلمان بپردازیم. And in that within that network we can address the common uh, challenges and uh, problems that Muslim women have around the world. و خوشبختانه رفتو و مؤسسه سول این فکر رو دنبال کردن. Unfortunately, the Rafto Foundation and the Nobel Peace Center have followed up that, those, that conversation and that debate, and today we are all gathered here. در حقیقت ما یک برنامه ریزی یک ساله رفتو و بنیاد صلح که ما اینجا هستیم. So it's really thanks to a whole year of effort and the work of the Rafto Foundation and the Nobel Peace Center. It's the result of a year's work that we're all here and we're talking together. It's the beginning of our work. And we are hoping to create a strong network. Thank you very much. Um, we have one more question from the floor and then we'll have the closing remarks. Please. Um, this is a question for all of you. My name is Thea Elnan, and I'm a student of international studies and Chinese language. And my question is, in the future, what would be, in your opinion, the best way for me and for my generation to continue to, uh, the fight for women's rights and human rights? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to start with uh, Mrs. Malahat Nazibova. Many of the children who are in this country, we have to solve problem in the country. We have to solve this problem, inshallah, but we have to think problems in every country, in every time, there are specific problems in every time. Və o problemlərlə sadəcə mübarizə aparmaq, yollarını tapmaq lazımdır. Actually, we have already taken the 
uh, the obligations to deal with uh, the women rights uh, problems in our uh, countries. So that's why we are not uh, aiming at to leave all these problems, such a bold problems to your generation uh, to deal with. <laughs> but of course, I know that they, this, is, this is just a wish and then pr probably in, uh, for each generation, they will have their own problems in, in that field as well. And I think... Uh, Və o ə, zamandan doğan bir hadisə olduğuna görə siz zamanında artıq özünüz qərarlaşdırasınız ki, siz hansı ə, yollarla, hansı yol xəritəsindən özünüzə plan izlasınız. And at, at each time uh, there are very specific problems of all generations and I think that the, uh, when uh, you are, will be trying to tackle the problems and to try to solve, solve them out, probably you should have a, a kind of uh, uh, very... Um, uh, uh, good initiatives and at the same time uh, you should have a road map how to solve these problems. Çünki məndən əvvəl də mənim müəllimlərim olubdu. Məsələn 15 il, 20 il bundan əvvəl onların ə, mübarizə apardığı metodlar artıq bizim nəzərimizdə köhnəlidir. Biz artıq yeni metodlarla mübarizə aparmağa başlamaq istəyirik. I also I have also been taught uh, by my teachers uh, in this field, but I see now that the, all the methods most of the methods used by them uh, are not uh, compatible now, uh, uh, are not fitting in new situations. So that's why when you will try uh, to, to do such a work, probably you also will refer to new methods. Yani, esas mesele odur ki, bu, bunu istem, iste, bu problemin olmasını, yani bu insan hakları sayesinde problemin olmasını istemirik ve esas odur ki, istem, istememek bunu, bunu istememek ve bizler, sizler bunu istemeyeceksiniz ve bunu uğrunda mübariz yaparsınız. And most important is, is, is, is a desire to have less problems and then uh, to be engaged in, in the uh, struggle for women's rights and, uh, and of course uh, to chase up the, uh, the bit experiences. This is Tuel uh, Belhassan. Realement, surtout les gens de votre génération, c'est de lutter chez vous ailleurs en Europe contre Les, les, les, les barrières frontalières qu'on fait, que, que monte l'Europe chaque jour pour euh, éviter d'être envahi par les hordes de, de migrants. Oui. Um, I think that your generation uh, in Europe needs to uh, fight the barriers that Europe is building uh, at its borders uh, to prevent uh, people from elsewhere coming into Europe, hordes of migrants. Je dis ça parce que le fait de, de bouger, de s'ouvrir, d'aller vers les autres est quelque chose d'extrêmement de, important pour les jeunes générations. Mm. Les jeunes générations ne peuvent plus... Euh, moi, ma génération a fait des études et elle était totalement libre de bouger d'aller mm. en Europe faire des études, mm. d'aller et de venir sans aucun problème. Aujourd'hui, il y a des herses mm. en Europe. Mm. On ne traverse pas les frontières. Mm. On ne se connaît pas. On ne veut pas se connaître. On a peur de l'autre. Mm. Et ça, c'est terrible. Mm. Um, I say that because I want to underline the importance of uh, seeking other experiences, meeting with others, uh, exchanging. Uh, my generation was free to go abroad and study. I benefited from studying abroad. Uh, and today, the barriers that Europe is building to this mobility uh, of young people uh, from my region and elsewhere uh, is very concerning. Uh, it contributes to uh, the construction of uh, a fear of the other, which is very damaging. Ça, c'est votre, votre rôle. C'est vraiment votre génération qui doit se battre tous les jours pour que il n'y ait pas ce, ce rejet de l'autre et bien au contraire, c'est l'ouverture qui fait que cette solidarité humaine, cette solidarité entre nous tous, doit être non seulement entretenue, mais euh, euh, on doit passer le flambeau à la jeune génération. Or, aujourd'hui, ce qu'on constate, c'est qu'on on est séparés. Je ne parle que de la Méditerranée, mais par ailleurs, il y a beaucoup de mers qui séparent euh, mm -hmm. les, 
qui, qui, qui sépare les, mm. les hommes et les femmes mm. de se rencontrer et mm. d'échanger, de se comprendre. So I encourage you to take this role to fight against the rejection of the other, uh, to build solidarity, to ensure that the flame of freedom and the struggle for women's rights passes from one generation to another, uh, and to fight against uh, the separation created by borders and, and seas uh, that divide us. <coughs> Mrs. Uh, Sherina Badi. What is your message for today's generation, the young generation of today? So each generation has its own problems. And each country has its own problems. So we always have to look for a way to face our problems uh, and to solve them. But the question is how? Um, and what would be the first step? The first step is having confidence in ourselves. Unfortunately, some women don't have that much confidence in themselves. So we have to strengthen women's confidence and especially young women in, and having more and more confidence in themselves. And so every morning when you get up and you look at yourself in the mirror, tell yourself, I can. And then go and go after your dreams. And don't be scared of making mistakes. Don't be scared of failing. And failing can be a, uh, uh, the beginning or an introduction for a greater victory in the future. Have you ever thought about the, how you actually position yourself when you want to jump over something? You go a step back. And you jump. <laughs> and so failing is the same way. So each failure is the beginning of a great victory. And go ahead and don't be scared of failing. So let's all take a step back and jump. Uh, before inviting uh, Mr. Antoine Bernard from the International Federation of Human Rights, I would like to thank all of you, um, the three brave women who asked us to jump in their own way, the three translators for uh, helping them to jump, <laughs> And um, I'd also like to thank Fritt Ohl, the Freedom of Expression Foundation. And um, to all of you, thank you for coming here and to all of those people out there for sending a lot of messages and a lot of questions. I think with a hashtag speak up, we can continue the debate. Um, maybe we can all take the debate with us in our homes and on our computers and our mobile phones. Uh, hashtag speak up. Um, I'd, like, I'd now like to invite uh, Mr. Antoine Bernard, but um, before leaving, at the very end, before, after the closing remarks, uh, Mrs. Malahat Nasibova will be reading a poem to us right after the closing remarks. And the poem um, she will be uh, reading from here um, and you have the translation 
on your seats. Don't look at it now. Look at it after the closing remarks. And I'd ask the, three, uh, the six of you just to keep uh, sitting while uh, Mr. Antoine uh, Bernard comes up. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the International Federation of Human Rights. Please. Good, ev good evening, everybody. And, and I feel nearly ashamed to, to, to, uh, to, to, pr to share with you a few concluding remarks after the fantastic conclusions we've just had. Uh, and I will certainly not try a synthesis of all the fantastic and moving and energizing ideas and, and reflections that we had the chance to listen to and interact with. But just uh, mobilizing and remobilizing for women's rights. Why? Why? What did we hear tonight? Because women suffer oppression? Yes, of course. But because women are drivers for change. This is a key reason why. And we heard it so loudly tonight. Mobilizing for women's rights. What mobilization? Ambition, of course. Tonight, didn't we listen to fantastic and moving and energizing? Ambition? Yes, ambition. Ambition, but realism. Realism, too. Ambition and realism. So many different situations tonight we've heard about. Clearly different realities, clearly different realities from the countries we, we, we listen to, from Indonesia to Turkey to Mali to Pakistan. So, of course, different realities. With one so strong ambition in common, though, gender equality, women's rights, equality between men and women as a very strong common denominator to this ambition. Now, is it a fight for women? Women's rights, a fight for women? Well, of course, and for the past two days in the, in the, in the seminar we had together, it was, well, for us it was really fantastic. This initiative was an initiative for women, from women, very strong women. And of course, a fight by women, because women suffer these violations, because women know of that, but is it only for women? Of course not. This is a universal fight. It is a fight that women and men equally have to stand for women's rights, equality between men and women. This also we did hear tonight so loudly, so loudly. Now, how women's rights? Magic recipe? Magic recipes? Do we know of magic recipes? Of course, tonight we heard there was no magic recipe. We heard that democracy is not only a question of free and fair elections. We heard that democracy is not synonymous of respect for women's rights. So many situations to try to address. So many, so many diversity, so great diversity of problems in different spheres. Cultural, we heard. Cultural, in, this, in the cultural sphere, in the legal sphere, in the political sphere, economic and social problems, differences between societies, closed, open, in between, opening, closing societies. Though we heard tonight in common from our uh, uh, guests uh, different possibilities for actions, protecting women's rights defenders, protecting women's rights defenders, strengthening capacities of our colleagues on the ground, sharing experiences, providing exchanging tools, techniques of advocacy for equality and legal reform. We heard about the need to, I'm sorry, I'm not so fluent in English, unmask, unmask instrumentalization of Islam. Is it the proper word? Unmask, political instrumentalization of Islam. We heard of the need and an interest in developing crossed experiences, but, and that my final concluding comment, we heard mainly, mostly about the need to decluster, 
More than that, the importance of bridging, of bridging like you did tonight, bridging between local and international, between regions, between b uh, bridging, uh, strengthening bridges among us, among uh, uh, uh, defenders uh, of uh, women's rights, so that, well, speak only when spoken to? Certainly not. Speak out because not spoken to. Thank you. Bu, bu, bu şeyi e, e, azadlıqlar haqqındadır. Yəni, e, hər bir kəs istəyir ki, e, qolunda zəncir olmasın, azad olsun, azad nəfəs alsın və bu şeyi bizim Azərbaycanda da fəaliyyət göstərən, eyni zamanda digər ölkələrdə fəaliyyət göstərən hüquq müdafiəsilərinə e, xas olan bir şeydir. And this, this poem is about uh, freedoms in general. So, and I think that this is very important. Uh, it, it contains very important messages also to all human rights uh, defenders, human rights protesters. I say that I don't want to put my hands on my hands, I don't want to put my hands on my hands, I don't want to put my hands on my hands. So uh, it is about how to destroy the chain uh, on, on over the hands of the people. And I don't want the freedom uh, uh, gram by gram. I don't want the freedom gram by gram. gram. Qolumdaşı zəncirləri qram gərək, qram, qram. Azadlığı istəmirəm bir həb kimi, dərman kimi, istəyirəm səma kimi, günəş kimi, həyat kimi. Səkil, səkil, ey qəsbi çar, mən bu elin cür səsiyəm, istəmirəm siz qabulaq, mən ümmanlar təşnəsiyəm, yəni mən dəmizəm. I am ocean. to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs>